Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. So let's talk about the Doppler effect. What is the Doppler effect? The Doppler effect is something that happens when you've got either a source of a wave or an observer of a wave, or both, in relative motion. So I could have, for example, a, a, an ambulance with a siren and it's moving towards me. So that means that the wave that it's creating is gonna be perceived differently by me than it would be if the ambulance was just sitting there parked playing its siren. All right, so what happens? The wave will be squished in front and it will be stretched in back, all right? So that means that when the source and the observer are moving towards each other, the wave is squished. So that means that the wavelength is smaller and the frequency is larger than it would be if there wasn't any relative motion. All right, on the other hand, when the two objects are moving away from each other, then the wave is gonna be stretched. So the wavelength is larger and the frequency is smaller. And let's see a demonstration of this. So, as you can see, the car starts. Here he is at rest, and now he's gonna move, and look at that, squished in front, stretched in back. It's a standard, easy, very, very, very simple thing to understand when you look at how it works. It's moving, it squishes the wave. Wavelength is shorter, that means the frequency is bigger. It's moving away, it stretches out the wave. That means the wavelength is longer, the frequency is smaller. All right, let's do some example problems involving this. Now, I'm not gonna really talk about this quantitatively, like how can you calculate the frequency? There are, of course, um, formulas for that, but most introductory physics courses don't require that you actually calculate that stuff. So, number one, a car is moving towards you and it speeds up. Now, if it's honking its horn while it speeds up, what will happen to the frequency that you're perceiving? Well, it's moving towards you, but it's speeding up. So that means that it's going to squish the wave front even more. So that means that the frequency will get higher. All right, so it'll go like that, all right? So what about number two? A star is moving away from the Earth. All right, now it's moving away. Now, what's the wave that we're perceiving from the star? The light wave. This also works with light. It works basically with any type of wave. So the star is moving away from us, and so that means that the wavelength is going to be bigger. All right, now when we think about visible light, we think 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. 400 is violet light, 700 is red light. So when things have a larger wavelength, we say that they are red shifted. So this light will be red shifted. Red shifted means moving away, all right? Now we've got an example where a spaceship is moving towards a star and it speeds up, all right? So it's going towards, that means it's squishing the wavelength, it's making it smaller, so we might wanna call this violet shifting, but for some reason we don't, we call it blue shift. So with light, these are the two terms that you'll see. Redshift, moving towards, or sorry, moving away. Blue shift, moving towards. And that's the Doppler effect. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it, work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're gonna be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>